The Honourable Member for Harbour Grace, Port of Grave. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And it's always a pleasure to, at this time, sit in our places and talk about our districts because ultimately that's the reason why we're all here. We look around the room, there are 40 seats, and we all represent our, our constituents, of course, who elect to have us here to do just that. And I'm, I'm very proud of the district that I represent, the strong district of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave. And uh, of course, I'm going to echo actually some of the things that my, uh, my honourable colleague across the way from the beautiful district uh, of Cape St. Francis has said with regards to our essential workers, our volunteer firefighters, and, and et cetera. Uh, but, Mr. Speaker, it is that time of year again, just recently in the, uh, in the district of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave, and actually the region of Trinity Conception Placentia, uh, we, we kicked off, and of course we had a successful uh, telethon again. That's right. Right, and I was happy to be joined by my colleague and neighboring MHA um, from the district of Carboneer Trinity Bay de Verde to announce $50,000 on behalf of government and of course the, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the Department of Health and Community Services to support the Trinity Conception Placentia Healthcare Foundation because as we know um, all of us can agree to this that when we talk to our constituents whether it's knocking on doors whether it's in the supermarket whether it's at the Tim Hortons or you name it wherever or even at a family get-together healthcare is ultimately the first priority on everybody's mind and and, you know, we're blessed uh, to have the health care that we receive here in our country, um, certainly our beautiful province of Newfoundland and Labrador. That said, we can always do more, but I, I tell you, it sure is a good feeling to go and volunteer some time at the TCP Health Foundation Telethon every year. And, you know, to bring that money um, to support this very important cause is, is amazing, and it's a privilege to do so, and I'm, I'm very grateful. And so again, keep up the good work, and that's put off by Eastlink and uh, the volunteers. Without our volunteers, this would not be possible, and everybody who dedicates their time. And uh, Mr. Speaker, this uh, the TCP, of course, covers uh, you know multiple districts. It, you know, it's a big region that many people, of course, depend on this. And our nurses and doctors, all of our healthcare staff, they're essential workers, um, and we thank them. And very proud of the good work that we do. A special thanks uh, to some some of the doctors that I went to school with, uh, Dr. Rebecca Powell as well as Dr. Peggy Tuttle. I'm very proud of them. Two very strong women in our, in our health care, um, local from Conception Bay North, and they are doing so well, and they've brought their education and their, and their skills right home here in Carboneer, in the region of Carboneer, the Carboneer Hospital. So very proud of them and a big thanks to them. Um, you know, we are living in, un in unprecedented times. I mean, you know, we, we go places, we've got our masks, and as members uh, mentioned and implied, you know, the, the community events that we're normally used to going to every weekend um, or every other weekend, you know, they, they can't happen now. And I mean, it certainly is taking a toll on, on all of our community, our seniors, our young people, um, everyone. So. Again, what we, you know, the more we can do to, to, to show appreciation, and again, our essential workers, as, as the, uh, the MHA mentioned as well, um, you know, when the rest of the world stopped, when we were all ordered to stay home and to stay in our bubble and to, to stay inside and, and to isolate, it's these men and women that went to work. They went to work every day in our gas stations, our grocery stores, and again, my heart goes out to them every time I drive by uh, in Bay Roberts to see those, those striking workers out there. Um, they've been out there a long time, but you know, without them, we would have been in pretty rough shape. Um, so they are indeed very essential, and we thank them from the bottom of our hearts. Um, some good things happening in, in the district of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave. Uh, this is the year of the stay home, the staycation. I've got a great chance as well to do some traveling to some of the districts across our beautiful province, places I've never been. Um, so it was a first time experience for me and I, I can't wait to see more because geographically we are larger than the Maritimes right here in Newfoundland, Labrador. And I think we're very unique, uh, safe to say, in the best possible way uh, with our people, of course, and our beautiful, beautiful uh, scenery and, and you know the piece, the piece of the globe that we occupy here. We've we got a lot to be proud of. Um, but in Port Grave, um, I'm very happy to say that over the years, over the past several years, we've been able to get some significant funding uh, to the Port Grave Heritage Society, the Port Grave Peninsula Heritage Society, a group of volunteers that come together to do what they can to enhance uh, the beautiful peninsula, uh, in particular the Greenpoint Lighting Station. Um, it's more than two million uh, over the past couple of years, myself as well as the, uh, my colleague, um, the MP for Avalon for the federal government. We've been able to come together and announce some pretty significant funding. 
lighting. And I mean, if anybody's looking for a place to go, Greenpoint Lighting Station. You know, for our locals can enjoy this. I know I enjoy it. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of history there. So by all means, certainly make your way down. Myself in the, in the MP, as well as my uh, colleague, the Minister for uh, Tourism and Culture, made our way out there this summer to announce some more funding for this wonderful group. And they're doing great things. Um, we've been able to upgrade the road down there as well, uh, which is becoming very populated with residents on Lighthouse Road. So uh, lots of things to, to see and do in our beautiful region there. Also, the summer games. As we know, Mr. Speaker, you know, you've often heard me stand here in the House of Assembly and promote the Newfoundland Labrador Summer Games that uh, hosted by Bay Roberts. We were all gearing up, you know, we were supposed to host this August fast, but as we know, uh, life as we know have, have changed with regards to this pandemic. So the, uh, the hold button has been pressed, if you will. Um, I've been reassured by the minister a um, few times that, you know, we will get to host those games when this pandemic allows. So we're looking at 2022. Uh, more than $300,000 has been awarded by this government to the town of Bay Roberts and as well as neighboring facilities because it's a team approach. Bay Roberts is the host is the host town, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for the first time in our history, I might add, we've never had the opportunity to do this despite many great applications being submitted year after year by the town of Bay Roberts and the team out there. Uh, but, you know, I'm happy to say we're making it happen finally um, and I look forward to that. Again, it was supposed to happen this past August, but we're looking at if the pandemic allows 2022. Um, lots of great facility upgrades are happening. Um, like I say, significant money has been has been awarded to the town of Bay Roberts. The Bay Arena is a very popular location out there. Uh, we've got some upgrades and enhancements for that facility. I understand there's more coming through a new program, but I'll let the minister announce that one. Uh, but I, we're excited for that as well. Um, and as I mentioned, Mr. Speaker, it is a team approach. So we're going to be utilizing the, ball, the baseball field in Upper Island Cove, the neighboring community in Upper Island Cove. Um, I understand as well, uh, across the way in Pitcher's Pond, the golf will be utilized for our summer games. So again, so much to see and do, and it's going to bring so many people, athlete, athletes, as well as the volunteers, you know, from across our province here in Bay Roberts. And, and our surrounding communities. And let me tell you, I'm very confident in the volunteers and the volunteer base that we have in Conception Bay North um, and for the organization and the hospitality. I'm, I'm going to say, Mr. Speaker, and you heard it here first, I'm going to put it on record. I'm going to say we're going to host the, ver the very best games in the history of Newfoundland and Labrador in Bay Roberts when that time comes. So I'm very excited about that. That said, I'm also excited uh, to be appointed a secretariat for the, the Canada, the 2025 Canada Games. Um, to support the city of St. John. So that's something, it'll be a, certainly a new task for me, new experiences and it, working with a new team. And uh, from what I've gathered for the meetings that we've had, they're a very competent group of people. Namely, I will say that most are women and, and that's good to see. So I certainly look forward to that. And again, I really look forward to finally being able to, you know, to, to be able to have these games in Bay Roberts, in the town of Bay Roberts. That said as well, I also want to talk about now the, uh, the volunteer fire departments in the district of Harbour Grace, Border Grave. We have many. We have, uh, we have one in, uh, in the Harbour Grace, the Fire Brigade in Harbour Grace. Uh, those volunteers, they're volunteers. But I will say, Mr. Speaker, and I will emphasize that what they do is very professional. The training they receive, the, you know, the service they provide is second to none. Um, and that said, too, I'm also happy that it was this government to bring in the presumptive cancer care coverage uh, for to include volunteers as well as ca career firefighters, uh, Mr. Speaker. So happy to say that we were able to award some funding for the Harbour Grace Fire Brigade for what was on their wish list, their request to provide a new washer um, for the department that you know, to wash their gear. Because what you know, the, you can imagine the toxins that they're exposed to when they go there, when when they receive that call, you know, of a fire, an emergency. So happy to say that that has been awarded. It's on a cost share basis of a 70-30 cost share between the town of Harbour Grace as well as the provincial government, and the provincial government's uh, contribution is more than four thousand dollars for that. And I know Chief Jim Burns is. Um, I hope he's listening now because he was certainly um, happy to get that because that was something big that they needed. And again, anything that we can do to support these men and women. Because ultimately, we all sleep easier at night because of the, because of the firefighters that we have across Newfoundland and Labrador. Um, they're there to protect us. They are there to answer medical calls as well as an emergency call. They protect our properties. They do everything they can to go above and beyond uh, for our communities and our people. So a heartfelt thank you to them. I understand it is Fire Prevention Week, or, um, or there's a theme that my that my colleague mentioned. So we can't say enough about these people because they're by far the most courageous volunteers in the world. 
certainly in my opinion, and I, and I speak for a lot of people, if not everybody in my district, the thanks uh, that they that they certainly that they get from residents. Um, that said, moving up now, we have the uh, the volunteer firefighter department of Upper Island Co, which recently re received the new truck uh, about a couple of years ago, um, the fire medical rescue unit. So that's wonderful, and uh, I will say the minister at the time came, made, made a trip to the community, and was very supportive of that. So you know that that goes a long way. Also, the, the Spaniards Bay Tilton Department, big thanks for those men and women, as well as Bay Roberts uh, Volunteer Firefighter um, Department there, the Bay Roberts Fire Rescue, that they call themselves. And um, something unique about them, they're, they're actually a regional location for the refill for the self-contained breathing apparatus cylinders. And so they are a station where the other volunteer firefighter de fire departments depend on this, on this service. And that's something that they are in need for. We had a great meeting. Um, the, fire, the provincial fire commissioner um, attended a meeting with the town, uh, with me actually just a, just a few weeks ago to talk about how important this is and this priority. Um, I know I've, I've also had some good conversation with the minister about that. Um, and he is very supportive and I'm confident that we'll be able to find a way forward to, to make this happen, to grant that very important uh, piece of equipment for them, the apparatus cylinders, again, because anything that we can do to provide them for what, what they need is, is, is amazing and they deserve it. They deserve to be protected as they work. Also, of course, uh, roads. I would say, Mr. Speaker, the second most big, the second, uh, the second top priority, I guess, if you talk to residents, aside from health care, is road work. And I think every MHA, probably with the exception of the Metro MHAs, can, uh, can agree with that. I mean, how it is very important for the provincial government, and as well as the support that we get from the federal government for the Infrastructure Canada program. I'm happy to say um, a, a, big, a big priority in the district of Harbour Grace, Port of Grey was made clear to me prior to my time as MHA, Harvey Street. And I'm sure some of my colleagues have taken that scenic drive to, to, through Harvey Street in Harbour Grace, excursion around the bay, as they say. It's even in a great big sea song, Mr. Speaker. And I'm happy to say that uh, our government, um, in, in conjunction with the federal government as well as the municipal government, uh, could announce the funding for the repair and the completion of Harvey Street. Phase four was announced last year, Mr. Speaker, for about 1.3 million from the provincial government. And this year, just a couple of weeks ago, myself and my MP, uh, my colleague, MP Kim McDonald, as well as the town we gathered in Harbor Grace just a few weeks ago to announce uh, more money, again, for the, for the completion of phase five for Harvey Street. Uh, the provincial portion for that one was about 1.4 million, whereas the feds came in at just over a million. And this was also in conjunction uh, with the, the Canada Infrastructure Program, so the municipalities come on board. So about $3 million when it was announced in our region just a few weeks ago. Um, and that, of course, the town of Harbour Grace contributed to that one, as well as the town of Spaniards Bay Tilton, which they received significant funding for upgrades for in the Mint Cove Pond area, uh, for water wastewater projects, as well as road upgrades. So. We can never do, you know, we'd, we'd love to have the ability to pave all the roads, Mr. Speaker, uh, but that's simply not the reality. You know, it, there, there's many, many roads with, uh, that have, you know, that, that certainly need some long overdue work here in this province, and I experienced that myself as driving around the province uh, this past summer on my staycations. Um, but I'm very happy to say that this work is finally getting done in Harvey Street. It was long overdue long before my time, as I say, but it's been made a priority to me. And I'm happy to say you take a drive down there now. Uh, residents are happy now for this delay because there's, there's, this work is certainly welcomed. And, I, and I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to the people of Harbour Grace, and not just Harbour Grace, but the region, because it is a main thoroughfare. And prior to the construction of the Veterans Memorial Highway, this was indeed uh, the, main, the main thoroughfare, you know, to make your excursion around the bay. On Route 70, Conception Bay North, uh, and the, on the Conception Bay Highway. So very excited about that, but let's keep it coming, because we, there's a lot more road work to be done. Uh, along Route 70, which connects all of our communities, just up the way in Riverhead, we we are getting some work done there, um, but uh, you know there's, there's some major work that needs to happen there in Riverhead from the Thicket Road down up to Jamie's Way. Uh, but again, that's something that we're going to keep on the radar, and uh, we're going to. You know, I'm confident and I'm optimistic that we're going to get the work because it is well needed. The traffic volume on this, the statistics are very high, and just up the road, uh, we're getting work done on the Tilton Barrens. It's, it's again, it's great to see long overdue work that's needed. That's happening now um, from the Tilton Barrens right on down to Thicket Road on Route 70. Again, it's a major thoroughfare for, for this region. I mean,
mean, not everybody wants to take go up on the highway, Mr. Speaker. As you know, I mean, you know, you have people who don't necessarily want to drive that speed, and some people. I know I avoid it at night time because, as you know, it's uh, we do have a lot of moose in this province, and I've I've seen a couple up close <laughs> without a license, I might add. <laughs> so that's not how you want to see them uh, in, on the road. So again, um, very important road work happening along Route 70. Also, we, ha we had some good road work um, happening on Cranes Road in Upper Island Cove, the community as well. Um, over on Duck Road in Baronide, uh, what's known as Otterbury, we've got some good work, road work happening there. Um, again, this is st stuff that needed attention uh, long before now, but I'm happy to say it's happening. It, it certainly is happening now, and those residents are, are, are very welcoming to see this good work. That said, we had another great meeting um, actually with the department officials in the Department of Transportation Infrastructure with the Town of Bay Roberts just last week. Uh, we have more than 18,000 cars that pass along the main strip on Route 70 from, say, the Shoppers Drug Mart area, Mr. Speaker, in Bay Roberts, right on down to, say, the Jungle Gyms. Um, and so we need some well-needed road work there. And again, we had a good productive meeting just last week with the Town of Bay Roberts. So it certainly is number one priority for the town. And I mean, not just for the town, but it's a catchment area. We have people, cars come from all over the region to shop because because Bay Roberts indeed is the hub of Conception Bay North. And we simply need the road work happening there. So I'm, I'm, you know, certainly committed as the MHA to help making that happen. Lots of things happening. I'm not sure if I'll get it all in in, the, in this time, but um, again, I want to give an update now on the uh, on the well over long overdue replacement of Colas Point Primary School. And uh, as we know, just recently we were awarded $16.2 million by the provincial government to finally replace this aging school. It's over 65 years. Um, that said, I want to give a throw a big bouquet to all the school community, the staff, you know, the parents, the volunteers, because the, 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 the school community that we experience out there is amazing. And I enjoy the annual walk to breakfast, which is that time of year. I'm not sure if they're going to be doing it again this year. Um, but they, you know, the walk to breakfast fundraiser where we get to serve breakfast to the kids. I, it's so fun. It's one of my favorite things that I do every year in the district. We roll up the sleeves and we, you know, we serve them waffles and you know, the, the whipped cream and, it, and it's a good time and everybody comes together. The volunteer firefighters also roll up their sleeves and come and they help out. So it's a beautiful community event um, you know, that, that, we, uh, that we get to do and, and thank God for those because uh, that, you know, around, around in the district of Harbour Grace, Port of Grave, community spirit is second to none. Uh, when someone is on hard times or there's an organization that needs funding or support, everybody comes together and supports and I'm I'm just so blessed to be part of it and it's really heartwarming to you know take all these in so that said uh, 16.2 million for Colors Point primary replacement um, we're on track. I've just actually did, a, did an update on my social media today of the latest photos that we were that I've received from the department. Um, you know of the progress that's being made out there. Uh, it is the plan to get out there um, early 2021 uh, for that school, and I'm certainly looking forward to that because we are an expanding population in Harbour Grace, Porter Grave, and this this school services children from Porter Grave, Hibbs Cove, Baronied, uh, Bay Roberts, Colus Point, Shearstown, Butlerville, and even some children from. Clark's Beach uh, come and attend school at Coley's Point Primary. Um, and again, I mean, kids who are there currently can say, you know what, my great grandparents went to school here in this very building. That's a neat fact, but, you know, thank God for this new facility that's finally coming. Um, also, want to put an emphasis on, on supporting locals more important now than ever, as we know what we're experiencing worldwide. Um, you know, it's, it's unprecedented times. It was great to take in a local harvest market that happened a couple of weeks ago in the town of Bay Roberts, where it gave a, a local vendors an opportunity to come out. It was all done perfectly in accordance with the policies and the rules set by public health. Um, but the vendors got out there, and, and of course, residents came out and supported that. There was some entertainment. I did take the guitar and sing a few songs, Mr. Speaker, to support the event, because music, you know, just makes everything better. I often say, you know, when I'm at, when I'm at community events, then how nice would it be if we had some music in the House of Assembly <laughs> on times? But uh, obviously, we know that's, that's not going to happen. Well, never say never. You never know, right? But that said, too, Mr. Speaker, I did acknowledge a, a very lovely resident uh, today in my member statement, a lovely woman by the name of Mary Butler, who I mentioned today, and who the community are certainly rallying around right now. Um, she received some, some, you know, some, some pretty bad news, obviously, about, about the cancer. But this woman, I tell you, is brave. She is courageous. Her faith is so strong. As I mentioned earlier, she's not questioning. She's not angry. Um, but instead, you know, this woman is loved by many 
many throughout Conception Bay North Region, and it was an absolute pleasure to go and to, and to meet her and to, again, sing some songs for her and to be part of that family for that day as they celebrated Christmas early for Mary. So Mary Butler and family, if you're listening, you know, God bless you, and we support you. And, and again, just thank you for, for, the, for the, the beautiful spirit that you demonstrate in your faith as well. So that said, Mr. Speaker, lots of things to talk about, um, and it's always a privilege and a pleasure to stand here on behalf, or sit today as, as we're sitting, uh, if, you know, on behalf of the people of Harbor Grace, Port of Grave District. I thank you again for your continued support. Um, I'll certainly do everything I can to help. My constituency office number is 786-1372. Please call if, you know, if I could be of any assistance. And again, a hats off to my constituency assistant, Lisa Brown. Um, you know, we're doing the best we can. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.